Have you ever edited a picture on Instagram? Can I ask you to think to yourself, why? Does it make yourself look better? Do you feel like you need to just because everyone else is doing it? Or is it simply just because you like the way it looks? I feel like part of the reason why we do edit our pictures is because we feel this sort of pressure to look perfect or presentable on social media. Essentially, we have been saturated by these images for the past 70 or so years, and it most likely all started when magazines were the most popular version of creating this unrealistic image for their viewers to see. Some of the biggest magazines in the fashion industry, such as Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, have been around for over 100 years. Since smartphones are part of our everyday lives now, this makes it ever so easy for us to edit our very own pictures at home. Nobody's life is as perfect as their Instagram feed. <laughs> Tiffany Tales. Who wants to share a bad picture? Nobody. They only show their best selfies or pictures that show what a great time they're having with their friends. That's after all the editing and filters they may add to them too, of course. We are creating the image of the life we want people to think we live. According to a recent Time article about Instagram, a survey of 1,500 teens and young adults showed that Instagram was the social media platform most linked to high levels of anxiety and depression. People go on Instagram and see others posting all about their perfect lives, and it's the natural human tendency for you to want to compare your life to theirs. This is what brings people down. People think they're not as good as their friends or family, or even the random people they see online. Although some people might feel happy for the people they see, all like their perfect families and all the vacations they go on, on the other hand, there are also some who feel really insecure about themselves and the life they live, so seeing these sorts of posts just worsen that feeling for them. Inverse.com presented a functioning MRI scan on the teenage brain to show exactly how it affects your brain. This scan showed increased activation in the visual cortex of the brain when viewing a photo with a lot of likes versus the exact same photo with just a couple likes. This means that your brain automatically pays more attention to stuff that has been rated better socially, regardless of its content. On Instagram, you see all the posts of your friends having a great time without you, and you see all the models and bloggers who all have seemingly perfect lives. Since you have the natural tendency to compare yourself to them, this might then cause that self-doubt and anxiety some people are experiencing. I see this problem on a regular basis. I'm a part of this generation that is so involved in social media and anything to do with posting online. Once you get sucked into this loop about caring so much over likes and comments, it's really hard to detach yourself from it. If everyone else is doing it, why shouldn't you? The problem is, a lot of people don't actually realize how bad it is not only for your mental state, but also the mental states of others. I noticed all the issues that come along with seeing these sorts of posts on Instagram. My friends and I are always asking each other what we should and shouldn't post in our profiles. Why do people even feel the need to portray themselves as presentable or perfect on social media? Even though people may edit their pictures, a lot of them don't actually realize that what they see on Instagram isn't the reality. I've decided to create something that specifically highlights these differences. I've created an Instagram account called Perfectly Mediocre Pictures. On this account, I'm asking people to submit their very own edited versus unedited pictures. I've posted all the submissions on the account, as long as my own, in hopes to show my viewers just how much pictures can be tweaked or changed to be made better. I've also created a short video highlighting the key points of this problem to help my audience get a better understanding of the issue. The beautiful bamboo school that sits right in the heart of the jungle. At first glance, it might seem like all of us are super in tune with nature and therefore completely disconnected from the internet, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that that's not really the case. A lot of the learning at Green School relies on the internet. Teachers are seen typing away at their laptops and students are seen completing online assignments. My friends and I spend a lot of our free time online too. So when I say perfectionism of image, what am I talking about? Why are we so obsessed with images on social media, especially Instagram? How does obsessing over trying to perfect these images affect our self-esteem? Teenagers like me rely on social media to share our lives and experiences with each other. So I went around school asking different people for their opinion on this topic. How do you think social media affects the self-esteem of teenagers? 
I feel like there are a lot of people that post stuff on social media because they want to, you know, be recognized as like pretty or like, you know, confident and everything. I think social media affects the self-esteem of teenagers because they always compare themselves to Instagram models and it makes them feel bad about themselves. If somebody has like a really popular social media account that can like bring them good, higher self-esteem because if people are giving them positive comments then they're going to feel good about themselves. Why do you think there's this sort of pressure to look a certain way on social media? I think there's a sort of pressure to look a certain way on social media because society brings that to us because celebrities look a certain way on social media and our friends look a certain way on social media. So we sort of want to imitate what we feel like is the best image that we can put of ourselves on social media. I don't understand why you have to get the perfect photo because people that you know in real life see like every like see you when you're not like perfect in a photo. Is it worth putting effort into editing your pictures? Personally, like you can edit your pictures if you want to. Like I don't really think it's worth it. I don't think that like I put filters on my photos or like edit the brightness or something, but I don't like change how I look. I mean, I think putting like a filter on a photo isn't like a bad thing. I think when it gets like it gets sad when people start like photoshopping them their bodies and stuff. But I don't think making like a photo, like different colors and stuff. I don't think that really has to do with anything. The downside, it literally takes like two hours to edit a photo and it's just a waste of time. It gets worth it at the end when people make you feel good about yourself. Shouldn't we be thinking about how this affects us? Is our obsession with the perfectionism of image creating us? Or is it ruining us? to do this because I myself am a part of this generation that is so involved in social media, so I first-handedly see how it affects me, my friends, and the others around me. I felt that creating something like my Instagram account would help reassure people and let them know that this issue of self-doubt and anxiety can be solved just by realizing that Instagram portrays this unrealistic image that people compare themselves to. This is a conversation online, and there are new platforms developing to make different comments about the idea of needing to be perfect. Examples of this are iWay and hashtag expectations versus reality. These platforms are meant to be bring attention to these issues by exposing the, re the reality behind different posts, except people still don't speak so much about this face to face. I wanted this to be my quest project because I felt that even though it's such a big issue nowadays, people avoid mentioning it or they don't try very hard to do anything about it. Doing this project has helped me see so many different people's opinions and insights on the subject. And not only did I help them understand it from my point of view, but I also, it also helped me observe it from theirs. When I first created my Instagram page, I have to admit that I was a little bit nervous of what people would think of it. The whole idea of it is for people to come forward and expose themselves on a really low level. I was one that really enjoyed editing my pictures for Instagram. I had never really thought much of it before I realized, that, before I realized the differences between the edited filtered version and the raw unedited one. I can see why people, including myself, would be nervous to finally come forward and be like, hey, this is me and this is real. If a lot of people have been hiding it and portraying something else for a long time, it can, be it can be scary to finally come forward and show the truth, even if it's just the smallest change by adding a simple filter. How does social media usage affect our self-esteem? Research by Dr. Mills and Dr. Hogue at York University in Toronto, studying 118 different girls, said, they felt worse about their appearance after, they, after looking at, a, at social media pages of someone that they perceived to be more attractive than them. Validation. To validate means to prove that something is based on truth or fact or that is acceptable. People like to compare themselves to others, yet a lot of the time it just makes them end up feeling worse about themselves. If this is what happens, why do we still do it? When we post stuff online, a lot of the time we are looking for some form of validation. That validation often shows itself in the form of the amount of likes and comments you get per post. I hope people will continue to think about this issue, try to find a balance and maybe not just think so much about what they post and what they see. At the end of the day, Instagram is just an online platform and we shouldn't let it affect us that much. 
I'd like to thank my friends, my family, all my mentors, and anyone else who has helped me throughout this journey. There's no way I could have done this on my own, and I'm so grateful for the endless love and support they have given me throughout this experience. Thank you. Woo!